Hey guys, it's Alex here. Now this week I'm going to interrupt the Reef Tank basic series to answer the single question I have been asked most in the last three months, and that is how is my copper banded butterfly getting on? Now ever since I did the video telling you I've got a copper band, I have been inundated with questions both in the comment section of my videos here and over at my Instagram page at Reef Talk asking me how he's getting on. Now in an ideal world I wouldn't have done this video just at this stage, three months isn't really long enough to call success for a copper banded butterfly, but there is certainly enough to tell you about, and at Reef Talk I give the people what they want. Now if it's your first time here at the channel, I put out a video every week with tips on how to set up and maintain an awesome reef tank, so make sure you subscribe and hit the bell so you don't miss out on anything. Right, let's get stuck in. I've had this guy for three months now, which is still early days for a copper band, but I'm starting to feel confident he'll be a success long term, and he's lasted much longer than any of my previous attempts. He is eating frozen food, but he has champagne taste, and only really eats P.E. Mysis, which is four times the price of normal Mysis. Posh kit. All told, I've tried feeding him 14 different types of food, including mussels, clams, garlic infused frozen food, mastic, bloodworm, and many others. Of all the foods I've tried, the only things he did eat were RS mysis, PE mysis, bloodworm and live mysis. He didn't show much interest in clams, and he showed no interest at all in mastic, which FYI is a total pain in the backside and will make your entire freezer stink. Now it actually took a lot of work to get him eating anything at all. At first he was very hesitant and wouldn't compete with other fish for food in the water column, only choosing to eat food that settled on the sand bed in the corner of the tank where the flow was low. I was putting in 10 cubes of frozen a day at first, and although I've now reduced that to 6 cubes, I don't think I'd feel comfortable reducing that any further. And that means my phosphate is sky high at around 0.3, which is 10 times higher than I'd like it. But he does now compete for food in the water column, and he goes absolutely nuts at feeding time. Although quite frankly he's still a bit rubbish at it, especially when there's a bit of flow. He's not a great swimmer, and while he does give it a red hot crack, you can tell this method of hunting doesn't come naturally to him. He is much more comfortable bending into crevices and using his big old beak to pick critters out of otherwise inaccessible spaces, which is of course the copper band's natural behaviour in the wild, and it's what he spends his day doing in my tank. He's definitely put on weight though since I got him, as you can see from these photos. On the left is day 1, and on the right is day 90. He's also managed to shake off a spot of lymphocystis, which is a good sign he's healthy. But he is still quite thin, and quite frankly I've seen more meat on a dirty fork. And that's why I didn't really want to have to make this video until I'd had him a good 6 months. And if you're new to the hobby, I don't want you to think of this as success at this stage. Copper bands are just so delicate, and can perish at short notice. So I'll need to get him twice as fat as he is at the moment, before I'm happy. Removing my purple tang was essential when I got this guy, as he bullied the copper band something chronic when they were together. And I've since added a white tail coal tang, who is much more peaceful than the zebra soma genus of tangs. So what about compatibility with corals then? In this tank I have LPS corals, SPS, zoas and rock flower anemones. He hasn't touched the flower anemones or any of my zoas, and I have plenty of fluffy SPS polyps that he hasn't shown any interest in. He also hasn't paid any attention to either of my scullies, which if I'm honest is a bit of a relief because they are ruddy expensive. And he doesn't seem to think of my euphilia as food either. But he does ruddy love to nibble on my acans, which is a lot less rude than it sounds. I have four small acan colonies, and he's had a good old chew on three of them. My green colony is now on its way out, and he's made some real progress on this red colony that used to have some nice rainbow colours in it. But to be fair, they're all alive three months in, so he's not exactly gone on a coral eating frenzy. And importantly, he has completely cleared out my Aptasia garden. He didn't show any interest for the first few weeks, but then they all disappeared in a matter of days. He's eaten large and small apps, and now there are virtually none left. Although if you look really closely, you will see a couple of tiny ones. And my weir box does still have a covering of smaller Aptasia, but to be fair, I like the idea that some spores might still escape into my display tank to give him an occasional treat. So while it's still too soon to say if he'll thrive long term, I am really pleased with the start he's made. It's taken a lot of time, effort and money, so he is very much not for the faint hearted, but he's an absolutely stunning fish and the true centrepiece of my tank. Oh, and by the way, his name's Wesley.
So as you can see, despite it still being early days, the copper band is doing pretty well and looking relatively healthy. Now I don't intend to do another update video until I've had him long enough to consider it a success, but I will do updates over on my Instagram page, at ReefDork, so head over there and follow me if you want to see how he gets on. And if you enjoyed the video, give me a thumbs up and subscribe for next week, and until next time, happy reefing.